hello everyone welcome back to another video today's video is exciting because it is my final Durham video it has been a long time coming so if you've been watching my channel you'll know that I went to Durham University I was on a four-year course and it was a rocky experience and I have not been Durham's biggest fan throughout the whole time but I finally graduated last week and this is my final Durham video. I was going to do lots of separate videos, um, but I'm so, I have a really exciting next chapter. The YouTube video is not going anywhere. And I am so excited for the next chapter that I just want to start posting that and cannot wait. So I think I'm going to put all of my final Durham stuff into this video. In this video I'm going to talk about the issues with Durham um, and I don't want to cloud the ending of my time at Durham but at the same time I think universities get away with way too much and I am so tired of it so I am going to put a few like because also everyone on social media that goes to Durham talks about it like it's incredible like as people do with all unis and I think the biggest issue in unis is that people don't publicize the bad stuff so then people go and get major culture shock and they just aren't prepared so anyway in this video I'm going to talk about the bad stuff um, but at the same time if you've been watching my channel um, you'll see that I've done loads of videos about my time at uni and even though I've had a lot of struggles like physically mentally academically you name it I've had the struggles I've also made the most amazing friends and I'm so happy for that but it was not an easy journey and I'm so grateful for my friends like I love them um but the rest of uni <sighs> I'll firstly say would I not go to Durham would I change no I wouldn't have changed because I think all unis have their issues and probably wouldn't have been that different in a lot of places so I wouldn't have changed it and I got through the other side so I wouldn't have changed it I think it's made me like it improved me as a person but did I enjoy it? don't know I'll just start with the video now so I'm gonna talk you through the issues that I had whilst at Durham University and I'm gonna start with it saying this I think one thing that frustrates me the most is when talking about the student mental health crisis it is so often viewed as some kind of phenomenon and it's not i think universities play a massive part and crazily degrade students mental health there is so much that unis do that makes mental health worse for students so i that's one thing that frustrates me. By the way, I'm in my pyjamas and my hair is up from my bath, just in case you're wondering. But yeah, I think there's so much that you need to do that affect... I Obviously, I can only talk about Durham, but um, from what other people said too, like there's so much that you need to do that affect mental health negatively. And I just... It's like you can't say, it's like a hush hush, like, oh yeah, the student mental health crisis, it's crazy. It's not. There is so much that's done. I'm not saying that the that universities are the main cause of the student mental health crisis, but they're certainly not innocent and it's not blameless. It's not 100% blameless. There are lots of things they could maybe not do anymore and then maybe mental health might improve. So that's the first thing I'm going to say. I'm now going to talk through a few things that happened whilst I was in uni that kind of are bad and contribute to bad mental health. So the first thing I'm going to say is I've got a whole video on this though so you can go check that out but in my first year I didn't have the best time in terms of friends and the main reason for this was because the process of getting a house was so rushed and so stressful houses were literally booked in November and we only started uni in October and everybody's second year houses were booked already and there was so much pressure and the uni tries to like relieve that pressure but at the same time there's only so much you can do saying no it's okay you don't need your house yet if everyone's getting their houses you're gonna worry like oh my god everyone's getting their groups together I don't have mine yet um, and that caused like big issues like in in people in my corridor like 
saying stuff that they were lovely people and I don't think they would have said that stuff if like and then me taking that stuff and like getting hurt like I don't think any of that would have happened if there wasn't so much pressure so then because of the housing situation that caused like me to be a bit excluded from my corridor and then that ruined like I was then living with people that I wasn't like friends with but I don't think like whether I'd have, I don't think I would have lived with them, but the loneliness I had in first year, because I wouldn't even go down to the dining hall. Like, I was so lonely. I wouldn't even eat. I would just stay by myself in my room. If there wasn't so much pressure to get your second houses ready, none of that would have happened. Because until the housing situation, like, I was getting along with my corridor, everything was fine, but then it was all too rushed having to get houses. The uni say they work to, like, diminish this stress so that students don't have to rush but the only way they could properly diminish this is stop housing until second term um because currently landlords aren't allowed to let properties until the first of october no the first of november and people queue up on halloween queue up to get the houses the next day it's insane you've only known these people a month they need to make the cutoff at least christmas like if there's already a thing saying you can't let out your houses till the 1st of November why isn't that in December or no why isn't that in January or February it's ridiculous how early you have to get your student house now I know this is a Durham problem I know this is a problem in lots of unis but there are also unis where this isn't a problem because it's the culture naturally does it later so um I know when my brother was in uni he didn't have this he didn't sort out his house till Easter like that's normal that's what it should be but instead they make a big deal out of the first of november and it causes so many issues if you want more information on that issue i've already done a video on it and i don't want to go into it again like it's all in the past and um, but you can have a look at what went down my first year and um, so yeah that's the first issue is the student housing crisis the student housing rush is way too much pressure and ridiculous. I was ready to drop out over that situation, which would have been completely avoided if there wasn't this pressure on the 1st of November. A second issue I have is, um, yeah, the inequality. I don't think uni puts you, all of you at an equal level, like when it's results time. No, I can't explain. But there were two occasions where I think that half, that groups were disadvantaged in summative assignments and other groups were advantaged. I'm just going to explain the situations because I'm not summarising it very well. But basically, in the first year, um, one of our assignments, no, it might have been second year, one of our assignments you needed computer software um, and it was an assignment over Christmas. And my laptop didn't have space for this computer software, so I couldn't get it on there. So that meant I only had the time in the term time to do my assignment. So that was three days before Christmas and one day back. Like we were, it, we the assignment was due the day we got back. So I couldn't do this assignment at home because I couldn't fit the stuff on my laptop. I was and then even if you could fit the space, it cost fifteen pound. Even if you've got fifteen pound, that's like a fortnight worth of food shopping. You don't want to spend that when you're paying nine grand for a degree why are you then paying an additional 15 pound for one bit of software for one module it's ridiculous so um i was going back in two with one of my lecturers and i was like this is so unfair like why is the deadline on this day on the day we get back so it's impossible to do at home so then those of us that can't get it on our own laptop literally have three days to do it and she was like well it's only 15 pound and i was like yes yeah, some people have 15 pounds some people don't you can't just assume the whole class has 15 pound to spare it was just ridiculous and i know it's only 15 pound but that is literally two weeks worth of shopping. Not everyone has £15. So, yeah, that was frustrating. And that put at a disadvantage. Because if you weren't able to get the software, you had to do it in uni time. Whereas if you had the software, you had a month and a half to do the assignment. If you couldn't get it on your laptop, you had three days to do the assignment. It was ridiculous. Anyway, moving on to the next thing. In uni, some assignments you have, you might have a summative assignment and then, a, no, a formative assignment and then a summative assignment. So a formative assignment, your mark doesn't go towards your final grade, but a summative assignment does. And in one of my modules for final year, um, for our formative assignment, our formative assignment was basically a draft of our summative assignment. And it was really vague what was meant to be done. So we were solely relying on our formative 
um, assignments to find out if we've got the right idea and then to go on and start our summative assignments. So we all handed in our formatives on time, everything was done and then when the results came back, the results came back for 90% of the class and the other 10% of us didn't have our results because there'd been an error and they hadn't been marked. I hate when they say error because that makes it sound like a computer problem but it wasn't one of the lecturers just hadn't marked the stuff um so yeah they hadn't marked the stuff now that would be fine if this was just an assignment that was the end of it but that then meant 90 percent of the class could get started on their summative assignment and 10 percent of us still didn't have a clue what to do but our deadline for the summative was all still on the same day it was so frustrating and again i was a bit of karen in uni i loved a back in two with my lecturer so I was furious and was back in two and then in the end the lecturer was like well we can have a meeting to discuss your work so I had the meeting and then she I didn't have much to say because I hadn't had my work back like what could I discuss there was literally nothing there to discuss so anyway it delayed us all starting our summative and in the end they moved the summative deadline back because I was like this is just not fair like 10% of us it's like a race and everyone's had a head start and we're just at the back waiting so yeah um, eventually they moved our summative assignment back but we just didn't need that stress if all the assignments hadn't been marked they shouldn't have given out the marks to anybody should have waited until all the marks were ready and also moved back the summative because it gave it wasn't like an extra day we were waiting we were literally waiting like more than a week to get our results back which when you only have four weeks to then finish the summative like that's crucial so yeah um that was another issue that was had um whilst at Durham and the fire and I just think if if a student didn't hand in their work on time the way this lecturer hadn't marked the stuff on time if a student hadn't handed in their work on time they wouldn't get their degree but if a lecturer does it there's no repercussions at all and then also the lead lecturer because there were three lecturers on this course the lead lecturer said it's not my fault this was a team effort and one person didn't pull their weight so don't take it out on me that's basically what they said if you're in uni and you're doing a group project and one person doesn't pull their weight they don't take an excuse like oh sorry so and so didn't pull their weight and so we missed out that slide, you'd all fail if you missed out a point. You'd, you'd all fail if you didn't fit the criteria. You can't just say so-and-so didn't pull their weight but the rest of us did this bit. We'd all be expected to drag the next person and cover their work. So why isn't it the same for lecturers? <laughs> Frustrating. Another point that I was really annoyed about was in the covid year that was my second year 2020 um so that covid started during my second year and that obviously was such an unknown for all of us to go on to online learning oh it was just stressful and amongst this stress one of our lecturers sent out an email saying if you ask me any questions i won't reply I'm sorry but we're paying nine grand a year we're still meant to get we were promised when covid happened we would not be getting any refunds because we would still get the service that we were paying for before so why and if there was a personal situation going on that meant she couldn't reply it should have been delegated to someone else there's another thing when lecturers are off there's no one else doing the stuff why are we suffering like lecturers are bound to have issues and be ill or have relatives die and all of that and that's horrible for them but then in addition they have the stress that the uni doesn't have anything in place to help their students so the students fall behind there's no one keeping them on track it's ridiculous anyway so that lecturer said that she couldn't um answer our questions in covid we were literally teaching ourselves we were given in that module we were given powerpoints and that was it what is that another issue i have with unis is the complete irrelevance it has to life i now have a biz degree in business and management i was looking earlier in the year at setting up little businesses and just because i just browse loads of different ideas and run with them for a week um, and i was looking and i saw something when i was looking for properties for for let i saw something that said 
business rates. I didn't know what business rates were. Nothing you learn in business and management degree is relevant to running a business or working in business. It is all theory and academic and the people teaching you are academics. They haven't been in the real world, they're academics. Business is a practical degree. Why are we learning theory from 1830? Like that method of learning as well, the lecturers just talking at you, blah, blah, blah. It won't help me in real life. None of that degree was relevant. I just had to go through it, just to have the paper that said I'd done it, but none of the knowledge I will ever use. I'm just gonna pop in here and add that there was some modules that were good, like any module to do with consumer psychology, that was always great. And then also I did my year abroad in Cologne and they were really good, like all the modules were practical, um, it was all modern, it wasn't, they showed a bit of theory but it wasn't solely based on theory, lots of things were practical. So you can watch my video on like Cologne versus Durham or something, but there is a right way to do it and the consumer psychology module showed that and the Cologne showed that, but it's just people too lazy to reinvent the system. But for me to even be a supply teacher, I need that sheet of paper with a degree written on it. It's so frustrating, the the nature of degrees and the teaching methods, everything is insanely outdated. And um, why for practical courses like business are you learning about history and academic stuff but nothing practical? Why aren't you, I can understand learning about the theory and all that if there's going to be something practical as well but it's solely theory and solely history. It doesn't make any sense, it's just and the teaching methods don't even get me started. Just talking at you for an hour. I don't know how that's meant to work for anyone. I've got ADHD and that was hell. Like it, not everyone can learn like that. I'm pretty sure 99% of the world can't learn like that. It is ridiculous. Anyway, um, my camera's dying. So I'm gonna go charge this battery and come back for more of the rant. <laughs> Okay, I'm back now and as you can tell it's probably quite a bit later. I can't remember where I got up to um, so Just gonna start rolling. So the next issue I have is How expensive uni is on top of what you're already paying in Durham you have to get your gown um, Not just for graduation you have to get your gown in first year for like formals and stuff, but your gown is Mine was second hand and I think it's second hand it was 50 quid, like that was the cheapest option you could get. You can hire them but if you're hiring them all the time, like for every JCR meeting, that's just ridiculous. So yeah, um, the gowns are really expensive. And then, you've already bought your gown, but then for graduation you need a different gown. So this free graduation, you have to pay 50 quid for a gown that is mandatory to wear. It's frustrating, you're already paying nine and a half grand for a degree where you get like six hours of teaching a week, where on earth, how is there not a little 50 quid to go towards your gown? How, that you don't even get to keep, how is there not 50 quid to go towards a gown that you wear for an hour? It's ridiculous, because that's not free, then is it? It's it's not free at all. Um, so that's another problem I have, but that's a problem with all unis, I guess. Um, and then there's loads of different hidden costs like, oh, Durham's inclusive and they let in people from all classes and things, but how can you afford to go to formal or different societies that cost like 50 quid to join or to play a sport, you have to pay money to do your sport um, or to go to a ball, it's like 70 quid. So there are some balls that are about 150. You've got the ski trip, which is like way more expensive than any school trip. I ever any school ski trip I ever went on like I understand yeah maybe you I don't understand why you have to pay for college formals in John's they don't pay for college formals they're free in Mary's you have to pay for a college formal but you're just getting the dinner that you've already paid for because it's catered college in the first place it makes no sense to me and it's so exclusive because not everyone could pay for that I never got to go to a summer ball because I don't have 60, 90, 100 quid to pay for a summer ball and they're meant to be this big part but you can only do it if you could afford to do it it's so frustrating um, and my next point is what's it gonna be? student support is so rough, so rough. First of all, the lecturers don't 
the way they do in school or the way they do in other unis, like I feel like there's a difference between how Russell Group unis view their students to how other unis like Polytechnics and things view their students. So they don't view us as like their students. We're just a lecture they have to teach every week. Like there's no pastoral care from your lecturers, which I was fine with because I didn't expect that. But then I spoke like Reese's dad is a lecturer and when I interviewed him about his job for all of my assignments, like he was talking about how pastoral care was such a big part of his job. And then Reese went to Brunel, which isn't a Russell group, and he was like, oh yeah, they're so good at the pastoral care there, like the lecturers. But no, there's none of that in Durham. Like they, they, they're not there to care about you as people. They're just there to like talk to once a week, talk on a script they've had for 20 years that hasn't changed to talk to talk at you, not teach you. So then that's okay though, because it's, maybe it's not in their job description, you know, you've got other things. Um, but that's one problem with lecturers is, is lots of them do research and that's like their main thing. But it is so obvious that research is their main thing and I just don't, this again goes back to like the structure of universities, I don't, if, if a lecturer is doing research and that means they can't give all their time, not all their time, but they can't give sufficient time to teach a class and give that class attention and make new material and put time and effort into the lecturers, into the lectures they shouldn't be taking a class that year. They can carry on with their research, but they shouldn't be lecturing if they haven't got the resources to teach. Anyway, I can't remember what, oh yeah. So then that's fine, because lecturers, okay, but then you hope the student support is good. To be registered, so to get support, to be registered to get support, you have to pay 50 pound for a doctor's note you can't just take a normal doctor's note, you have to pay £50 for a specific doctor's note that says what support you need. So you ha in first year, like, I needed some support and I couldn't get any of it because I couldn't pay the 50 quid. Because 50 quid is like a month's worth of food shopping. I had £50, but as a student, like, £50 is a lot of money, you don't want to why should I have to spend £50 to prove I have a disability? Like, it's ridiculous. Anyway, so this year I paid the £50 because I really needed different support and things. So I paid the £50 and this, I, I saw different, in the, the uni has counselling. And in first year, no, in second year I went through the counselling programme and I went through it in third year as well and I went through it in fourth year. Second and third year, it was amazing. I won't fault the counselling service. Um, but the woman I had in my fourth year, she would, you're meant to ring for hour sessions. She would ring for 10 minutes and she would never listen to me. The stuff I said, she never mentioned. And I would say like, awful stuff and she'd be like you're doing so well sounds like you're doing really well and I'd be like does it because I'm falling apart over here and you're saying sounds like I'm doing great I just don't see um so yeah the counselling service itself if you're struggling do get in touch you do get seen quite quickly and you get seen six times and you can get seen or six or eight times and you can get seen once a year and um, for that six to eight sessions so I would recommend the counselling service I haven't really got much to fault it except for the woman I had this year she just was not great. She was judgmental actually, which I think is awful in a counsellor. But anyway, so that's the counselling service. It's actually quite good. So if you are struggling, do reach out to it. Anyway, we then go on to student support. So um, I was registered under, I was like having a disability because of different issues I have. And I had to pay 50 pound to prove to them that I had that. But then once I proved it, I then had to wait. I started the process for getting this like support in September. I didn't have a meeting after I'd given my proof and everything. I didn't have a meeting to arrange actual support till January. So I had to wait months for that. Even though it was meant to be speeded because it was my final year, but I had to wait months for that to happen. So then in January I finally got my meeting after I've already done half of my assignments where I could have used the support. Um but yeah half of my year was already done so then January the meeting came along and in that meeting um I had a few things arranged I can't remember exactly what was arranged but um a few of the things I had arranged was that um I shouldn't have all the deadlines at once and they needed to be separated 
at least by a week. So I had that written down in my, I can't remember what it's called, a DSM, which is the support that you require. So one of the things was that I shouldn't have deadlines all at once, which shouldn't be a thing for anyone. And um, so I had that um, and there were no issues except for the wait time and the fact that it cost me £50. There weren't main issues like with how the support is conducted, like on the DSN they highlight what different bits of support you need and there were other stuff highlighted but I just can't remember, but that was the one that we end up with an issue with um, and that's all fine, like the process is good. So you put that in place, you go through three months to get that put in place, um, you pay £50 to get that put in place and then my deadlines come through and they're all due on the same day. So my dissertation, my other two summatives, all due on the 25th of April. So I get in touch and I'm like, I've got this DSN, um, I'm not meant to have deadlines all at once, can I get them separated? So they're like, okay, you can have one on the Monday, one on the Tuesday, one on the Wednesday. And I was like, seriously, no, 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 no. So then I go in, because I'm seeing like an NHS counsellor at the time, and I give a, a letter from her saying there needs to be seven days in between each deadline and they just didn't care they didn't they didn't give it me I, I had this rush thing so when I'm meant to be doing assignments for deadlines instead I've got like the pressure of having to get this sorted I had this DSN in place so why was it being ignored I had about three doctor's notes from different, oh sorry, Reese's just rang. Um, and I have like three doctor's notes from three different levels of doctor saying that I should have a week in between each deadline and the business school just didn't give it to me. And um, I'm out of breath because I've just come up the stairs and that was just ridiculous. And then I had to have all the stress of trying to deal with that on top of actual stress of assignments. The one frustrating thing is, is they were like, oh, you can't have a deadline and um, they were just given this stuff about the deadlines and then my friend was given a three week extension I didn't want a three week extension I just wanted deadlines between things she was given a three week extension for something not disability related so I'm not hating on her for that at all but it was just so stupid that the uni for something disability related couldn't give that anyway so they said either do it for these deadlines we've given you, or defer and do it next year. I just want reasonably spaced deadlines, like was in my agreement, like my doctors are saying to give me. Like, why, why do I have to wait until next year to defer my whole degree? Anyway, so they didn't give it me, and then after they were due, someone emailed me with, like, time planning help. In May, I got an email saying, hand one in on the 15th of April, hand another on the 22nd, and hand the other one on the 5th, on, on the 25th. Like, that was way after I'd already handed them in. It was so frustrating. Anyway, so I think in the end, I got like three days in between each deadline or something like that. I can't remember to be sure, but I didn't get like what I was asking for and the stress of having to ask for it. Like in the end, I just had to give up because I was like, I need to like focus on these essays and it's just frustrating when you have that in place. But they shouldn't be giving you so many deadlines at once anyway. So then another thing with the disability support is they do screenings um, for like different issues. And I got screened for ADHD and they were like, yeah, looks like you've got ADHD, but to, prove it for the university to get additional support or something you either have to do a two-year waiting list which is useless because it's January of my final year or pay £200 for us to write it down so that's not the uni that's a problem with the NHS and with ADHD diagnostic stuff but still that was frustrating because the uni could do a screening and if they can see if they have experts that do these screenings if these screenings are saying you have it why is that not enough Anyway, so that that's all about the student support thing. It's just frustrating that you go through so much to get a DSN and then they don't pay attention to the DSN and that caused so much stress. Another issue in Durham is the blatant misogyny. Um, I've got two examples for that, but I'm sure there's a million others. Um, it's just... Um, there was a student that was raped while on year abroad and the uni said they couldn't cover her legal expenses as a victim if but in the paper in the 
small print. If she had been the rapist, they would cover her legal expenses then. So, um, and then also the head of DU Sport has been involved in many. Name him, Meg. I'm not name. I'll just say the head name of. Him. There was a sports team. I'm going to try to keep it anonymous. There was a sports team, and there was a scandal within that sports team that the males had a group chat of a game of getting with the girls team and there were different points given for different girls and bonus points for different things um, and that was ran by the person who is DU Sport. Now that was uncovered and it was put a stop to but he didn't get any um, repercussions. repercussions because the game hadn't started yet. The game was his idea, he made a group chat for it, he sent it in the group chat but he didn't get any repercussions because the game hadn't started. The game only hadn't started because term hadn't started and that person is then D head of DU Sport. That's an influential position, a high up position for someone involved in that. The same year they're involved in that and that wasn't publicly announced or anything because the game didn't start even though there was every intention for the game to begin and even to put that stuff about girls to be like oh this one's easier this one's like that should be an issue within itself like whether you started to give out the points or not the fact that you made the sheet in the first place go through some disciplinary there should be some kind of disciplinary action for that now moving on i think this is my final thing in today's video <laughs> Um, and this is like all of these events like the stress of sorting out deadlines and um, not being able to ask your lecturer questions the pressure of not being able to find a house and not having friends and um, not getting having to being left out of social events because they cost too much like all of them things could be the final straw for someone they are big stresses and for someone, if someone's already struggling, they could be the final straw. I'm not saying these things on their own, but these immense pressures that you feel at the time because uni is shown as such a stressful and important thing, it can just be the straw on the camel's back. And it's just so difficult. I know you might think like first world problems, but if there's already a student mental health crisis, why are these additional stresses being put on students? Anyway, the final thing I have is um, probably the one that could have been the most damaging for someone's mental health and um, I'm so grateful I had my boyfriend with me at the time because um, otherwise I think it would have been quite damaging for my mental health. But basically when my results came through, Durham Uni have a results day and that day was the 22nd your, your module, your course has a results day and our results day was the 22nd of June. Yeah, the 22nd of June. So on the 22nd of June at 11am I log on to see my results and it says that I got a first. I was never in my life expecting a first so I was just like whoa. But I was also kind of like okay I was not expecting a first, could this be wrong? And then um, I start talking with my friends and I realise we all got the same mark for individual essays in a module but in the same module we got different marks for a group presentation that we all did together so within about five minutes of discussing our marks we realized there'd been a mistake and this mistake meant that I didn't have a first I had a 2-1 um, which for me a 2-1 especially after like I've struggled a lot at uni like I said mentally physically academically socially everything this 2-1 could have been such an achievement and so amazing for me like I struggled to attend classes literally final year my attendance was basically zero percent and was probably only about two percent in second year like to get a 2-1 given I'd basically not been to the classes like that's so good and should have been a great achievement but instead because I'd f been at first given a first it was so disappointing and I'd rang my dad and he'd, he'd been like the first in the family to get a first and then I have to ring back like oh sorry they made a mistake I got a 2-1 but it wasn't even that simple because they we noticed the mistake and then the next day we got an email saying some of the results are wrong if you refresh your results page your degree classification will be correct now so I was refreshing the whole Wednesday and it was still saying I had a first 
and I think I got 68% or something. So I was like, uh, maybe I have got a first, maybe they've rounded it up because of COVID or I don't know, maybe it's been rounded up. Um, so I was still refreshing and then because it had been like over a day and they'd said, if you refresh now, your results should be there. I was like, oh, I've got a first. And then on the Thursday I refreshed and I didn't, I had a 2-1. But think if that had been the difference between a pass and a fail, if I'd have thought I'd passed and then turns out I failed, that could have been so detrimental to mental health. And also to have to go back to everyone and be like, oh no, I didn't get a 2, I didn't get a first, I got a 2-1, which should have been amazing in the first place. But when you have to say, no, I didn't get a first, it was a 2-1. When everyone's already celebrated your first and now you're like, no, it's 2-1. It's so devastating and it's just not a great situation. And I don't know how, like, giving out university results is such an important thing. And Because imagine if I'd have had, like, a graduate job lined up and I'd already told them I'd got a first because I'd already had it through like it's it was just a f and I didn't get an apology I got a rude email through like bleh, but there was no apology in it and I sent an email back like with long words of devastation not like give me my first because I didn't want the first because I didn't get the results for a first but I just wanted an apology and I didn't get a reply back. Your degree results are such an important moment and should be a really happy day of celebrating and instead for me it was so confusing and disappointing and I would have never thought I could ever be disappointed with a 2-1 but it ended up being completely clouded and disappointing and um, so yeah it was they just ruined that and that why had they not checked it me and my friends noticed the mistake within five minutes how had that not been checked and why could we have not got an apology anyway so that's all the stresses that went down at durham uni i'm not trying to tarnish the name like i said earlier i just think unis need to be a bit more realistic these are people's lives you're affecting these are people and even though like luckily i I'm not planning to do a placement this year. I'm going on a gap year. A long time ago, I gave up caring about my degree um, and I've not really found it important. Like, I found it important to get it done, but like, I've not been really hanging on to it. I've lost care a long time ago, but lots of people haven't and lots of people view their degree and people in uni think it is such an important thing like when you're telling a student they didn't get that grade they got a grade below that's their life at that time that's what they've spent and i'd spent ages working for it as well like that's what they've put so much effort into and when you're in uni like that's your life if you're going on to a master's if you've got a graduate job it seems so important and you still need the degree certificate for loads of jobs you need the certificate whether like i said before they're not even helpful or not but you need to show an employer you've got it so yeah it's even though like it might seem trivial like oh it's just this it's just that but as a student that's your whole life and everything seems so imp when you're older and can look back things aren't as important but when you're going through it that's everything to you so I just don't think unis realize or seem to act like it's lives it's people they're talking to or people they're dealing with or they don't view the students as people they view them as profit I think um Show <laughs> I'm holding my bear anyway um Sorry about the country. it's okay <laughs> Reese isn't eating a pizza in the background um but yeah I just think Not a whole pizza it makes me sound fat a pizza baguette um, <laughs> yes. anyway so yeah I think I don't want to cloud my experience in Durham I've still had a great time and made amazing friends but I'm just tired of the student mental health crisis being viewed as blameless and out of nowhere because I think unis aren't the cause of it necessarily but contribute a lot to different stresses Good and point thanks and also it's not if you're like a lecturer or something i'm not attacking you it's the uni as a whole if you're a lecturer and you're ill or someone's died why aren't because that adds stress to you if you're ill and you you're not able to work you're stressed because you're ill but then you also have the added stress of probably student emails like asking questions and knowing that you're not getting your cohort through like 
what it's meant to get through. Like, why don't they have supply lecturers? Because for one of the modules where our lecturer was off, we had lecturers that did the seminars, so why couldn't the uni have something in place that, that the lecture work could be covered? Because one of our lecturers this year went through two bereavements. So we had to fit a term's worth of work into two weeks once he got back from his bereavement. How is that? Why is nobody? Why is nothing else in place to support lecturers as well? It's ridiculous. So yeah, that's my video on my time at uni. I still had a great time and I wouldn't change going because I found my friends and now I have the degree, which I just needed the piece of paper and then I could scoot. Um, but yeah, that's that's my little rant and I hope you enjoyed. And I, I said at the beginning of this video I was going to add my like different vlogs to the end of this but it's gonna be in two separate vlogs because I've ranted for way too long so otherwise it would be like a two hour video so um come back tomorrow and I'll post like my final days at Durham vlog so I hope you enjoyed this video I'm not meaning to put anyone off uni Durham please don't sue me because everything I'm saying is true I'm just telling my story so please don't sue me I don't have money if you sue me I'm off bye <laughs> And um, if you enjoyed this video or if you've enjoyed watching my vlogs, please stay subscribed because I have something so exciting coming at the weekend. There's amazing videos starting Sunday. So please stick around and subscribe and just wait to see what they are and then you can decide if you want to stay or you want to go. But for the next year, there's so many exciting things planned and I've been putting so much work into it. So please stick around for the YouTube and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.